Good evening. I'm Xavier Salomon, the Deputy Director and Peter J. Sharp Chief Curator at the Frick Collection. Welcome to this episode of Travels with a Curator. This evening, we travel to the south of France, to Provence, to what is today known as the Côte Azur, the French Riviera. And we go to the town of Grasse in the footsteps of one of the French 18th century artists whose masterpieces are held at the Frick Collection. This is a view of the town of Grasse, uh, over a hilltop overlooking the valley below to the right, all the way down to the Mediterranean Sea, with at the very top of the hill, the medieval cathedral. It was just below this medieval cathedral in this house that on the 4th of April, 1732, uh, a husband and wife who were glove makers in the town had their only child, who was christened Jean Honoré Fragonard. Grasse was well known for its tanneries in the 17th, 18th century, and there were many glove makers in the city, and Fragonard's family um, were working in that field. Fragonard, in fact, lived um, only a few years in Grasse because his family moved uh, to Paris uh, as, um, as the child was growing up. And he then studied in Paris, first with Chardin, then with Boucher, and of course became the painter uh, we all know and love. Grasse is um, still uh, the city of Fragonard in a number of ways. And this is the monument that was erected to him in 1907 in one of the squares of the city. Uh, so in many ways, he's still the presiding genius as arts go in the city. And if you visit Grasse today, there are many works by the artist and many sites that are important for his works and for the Frick collection, as we will see. The cathedral is one of the great monuments of Grasse. Uh, as I said, it's on top of the hill. This is a 13th century church dedicated to Our Lady, to Notre Dame. Um, the interior is this extraordinary um, cave-like dark space. Um, the structure is medieval, but it was damaged during the revolution and um, rebuilt in parts. And this is a, a church which, as extraordinary as it may look in terms of its architecture, holds some very important treasures in terms of painting. Just to the right in the side nave are three paintings by the young Rubens. These were originally made for Rome when Rubens was in Italy in the early 1600s for the church of Santa Croce in Jerusalemme, which is the church that holds the largest piece of um, the cross of Christ as a relic. And so you see that both um, side scenes uh, represent episodes from the Passion of Christ, while the central uh, painting, the central panel, uh, represents Saint Helena the Emperor Constantine's mother, who was responsible for having found the relics of the cross and the objects to do with the Passion of Christ in Jerusalem um, and then brought them to Rome. It's still somewhat mysterious how these three pictures uh, left Rome and found their way to Grasse, but here they are in the, in the cathedral and they're very important works uh, for Rubens's early career. Another early work, um, in the church is actually an early work by Fragonard. And this is not the Fragonard we would expect at all. This is made in 1754 as a young artist at this point in his, in his 20s is trying to break through in the academic world of Paris, of France, and trying to get royal commissions and church commissions. This was actually commissioned by the Confraternity of the Holy Sacrament, which was attached to the Cathedral of Grasse, his hometown. And it is the only large work, uh, religious work, that Fragonard makes for Grasse. And it's still in situ in the Chapel of the Holy Sacrament in the Cathedral. It's a classical work. It shows Christ washing the feet of the apostles uh, around the time of the Last Supper, just before his Passion. And of course, it is a very different work from the Fragonards we have at the Frick and the Fragonards we all uh, think of. This building, which is just outside the historic center of Grasse, is a very important building because this is the so-called now Villa Fragonard, even though it never belonged to Fragonard. 
Fragonard had a cousin called Honoré, who was the son of the sister, Madeleine Fragonard, the sister of Fragonard's dad. And Honoré was uh, older than, than Fragonard, and he was um, working as a perfume manufacturer in Grasse. And he bought in uh, the 1700s this villa, uh, which belonged to an aristocratic family, which was a 17th century building. And um, Honoré, who was, uh, his, his surname was actually Honoré Maubert, um, acquires the villa and moves there. The villa is uh, a fairly simple building uh, on three floors. Uh, on one side where you enter, it has two floors, but on, on, the, on the back side, it has a further floor below. Uh, it is surrounded by beautiful gardens. And you can see that it has from its garden facade an incredible view across the valley below Grasse uh, down to the Mediterranean, which you see down at the bottom on the right. This villa is now open to the public and it is a museum in many ways dedicated to Fragonard. The Musée du Louvre has lent a number of paintings by Fragonard and objects to do with him to the villa, including this uh, wonderful chair, which belonged to the painter, and uh, a box of his own colors, his pigments that he used. For us, it is important because in early 1790, as the French Revolution is, is raging and terror is beginning in Paris, Fragonard decides to escape from Paris. He decides to leave Paris together with his wife, his young son, and his sister-in-law, Marguerite Gérard, who is also uh, a painter. And both Marguerite and uh, Fragonard's wife uh, were artists, and they were also originally from Grasse. And they all escape to Fragonard's birthplace. As far as we know, um, Fragonard did not spend much time in Grasse uh, between his childhood and this period. He probably went via Grasse, maybe on his way to Rome, uh, when he traveled there, when he traveled to Italy. But he moves there in, 70, in 1790 and spends more than a year after the spring of 1791 in Grasse. And he rents his cousin's house, Honoré Maubert's house. And um, he's also very close to Honoré's son, his second cousin, Alexandre Maubert. And while he's living in Grasse, Fragonard works in the villa. And so the most extraordinary thing in this building is actually the grand staircase, which is entirely painted by Fragonard in grisaille, in black and white, uh, exactly between 1790 and 1791. This is something he does on top of paying rent for his cousin uh, to decorate the villa. And this is a incredibly grandiose decoration, but also very simply and effectively done. Uh, this is not a real fresco. This is painted directly with oil paint on the walls is what would be known as a secco. So it's, it's painted on the walls, but it's not in a true fresco uh, technique. And it shows a series of ancient figures of gods and goddesses and a series of symbols over the two floors that occupy the staircase. Uh, and you see here the, the first ramp of the staircase with many of the decorations, of course, referring to symbols of the French Revolution. Grasse during the revolution was um, an incredibly pro-revolutionary city and, and many people uh, were very excited by what was happening in, 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 in Paris. And so Fragonard paints for his cousin all of these Republican symbols around the staircase. Uh, some of these symbols refer back to antiquity. There are several heads of Medusa, for example, and there are images, for example, of, um, of Athena or of King Solomon or a number of allegorical and ancient figures. Uh, some are portraits, and this is um, one of the portraits in these medallions. Maybe Alexander Maubert, um, Fragonard's second cousin, we don't really know, um, and also a number of Masonic symbols. Uh, this staircase is a really unique work uh, in Fragonard's oeuvre. And as much as the cathedral painting of the washing of the feet uh, is so strange for people who can think of Fragonard as the author of the Fragonard Room at the Frick and the famous swing at the Wallace Collection, this staircase is also a unique example. It's the only mural large scheme by Fragonard. Um, and in terms of its iconography, it's a particularly uh, strange and wonderful commission. 
Uh, I love some of the details of the staircase. This, you know, he also, he paints everything. He paints even the doors uh, with this almost abstract decoration. Um, when you look at this, you could imagine that Matisse, who of course spent a lot of time in Nice and in the south of France, uh, would have painted something along these lines. And you would never guess that this is an 18th century work done in the 1790s uh, by Fragonard. But for us, the villa is also important for us at the Frick. And this is the back view of the villa where you see uh, that towards the garden entrance, there is an extra floor, a lower floor. But the middle floor, which is the ground floor uh, on the main entrance, if you look at the um, six windows along this enfilade of rooms, the two central ones are the main salon, the main room of the villa. And that main room held for a number of years, what we now know as the Fragona Room at the Frick. The four original canvases of the Fragona Room showing the progress of love had been painted in the early 1770s for Madame du Barry, the mistress of Louis XV of France, for her pavilion at Louvain, um, outside of Paris, overlooking the River Seine. Madame du Barry, however, in 1773, rejected the works for a number of reasons, and Fragonard probably kept them rolled up in his house. He lived in the Palace of the Louvre, where other artists had their studios and lived, and he probably had these, these canvases rolled up there for about 20 years. But when he goes in 1790 to Grasse, he either brings, the, brings them with him or has them shipped there, and he decides to install them in his cousin's house, in the Villa Maubert. And so what you see now in this room, which has retained its original size, are uh, copies uh, made in the uh, late 19th century to replace the original. And so here you see on each side uh, the meeting on the left and uh, the pursuit on the right, uh, two of the original Du Barry uh, canvases, um, and on the opposite walls uh, the lover crowned on the right and uh, love letters on the left. But to install these four canvases, uh, the Mauberts actually moved the doors in the room. Uh, they central, center the room so that the paintings can fit exactly in that room. And Fragonard creates a series of another 10 canvases, probably around 1790-91, while he's in Grasse, um, for this room. So the overdoors with the cupids uh, were added later. And he adds uh, this great um, central scene of uh, Love Triumphant, which was originally placed uh, over a fireplace. So below this, where you now see a piece of furniture, there was um, a fireplace originally. So this idea of the flames coming into the picture, they would have come from the fireplace between the windows. And he also adds the hollyhocks, uh, four panels of hollyhocks. Here you see two, there are two on the opposite wall uh, to finish uh, the ensemble. The Fragna Room, was in Grasse from 1790 to 91, uh, when it was effectively created and installed here, all the way to 1898. So for about a hundred years, uh, the, the, the room was there. It had only been installed at Lucienne for Madame du Barry for about a year or so. So um, it, it had spent most of Fragonard's life uh, invisible in his studio. And he decides to move it to Grasse and leave it there uh, the Fragona room was uh, in the house belonging to the heirs of Maubert um, until, as I said, 1898. That's when Maubert's um, great-grandson, Louis-Michel Malvin, um, decides to sell the canvases. And there had been previous plans to sell the canvases. And, and Malvin is described as a very difficult character, uh, people who go and visit, including the, the, the English princesses, the daughters of Queen Victoria, uh, report on how rude he is to them. And he's a Republican and he's sitting when the princesses are coming into the room and he refuses to remove his hat. And, um, and he is clearly a sort of kind of country character that is um, well known to us through so many French novels uh, describing the 19th century. But Malvin tries to sell the canvases a number of times and he tries to sell them to the state, to the French state. At one point, there is a rumor that he is selling them to uh, the deposed emperor of Brazil, Dom Pedro II. Uh, but in 1898, in February 1898, he sells them finally to an English dealer. And having passed on to another English dealer, a year, slightly less than a year later, in January 1899, they are acquired by uh, J.P. Morgan and installed in J.P. Morgan's house in London. 
And it's only when Morgan dies in 1913 that then they're brought to America, uh, exhibited at the Metropolitan Museum, and then Frick acquires them in 1915 and installs them in the house which had already been built and was almost finished. Um, so what we today know as the Fragonard Room at the Frick actually uh, was designed long before the Fragonard were acquired and the Fragonards were, were, were fitted in that room uh, subsequently after the uh, acquisition of the canvases. So Grasse is important for us because um, this is where the Fragonard room was for a hundred years and it is wonderful to go and visit this villa because the room is actually quite small compared to the Fragonard room at the Frick and it is very sort of cozy and, and it is wonderful to have this effect where the entire room is covered with the Fragonards. At the Frick we also have this document, a receipt from 1791 um, where uh, Fragonard declares to have received uh, 3,600 livres from mon cher cousin, from my dear cousin. And this receipt has always traditionally been linked uh, to the Fragonard room. So this is probably the receipt for the extra canvases that Fragonard paints around that time. But it could also be a receipt for the frescoes, the, the, the wall paintings in the staircase. So we don't actually know uh, what it is for, but it clearly is for something done uh, for the Villa Maubert. Maubert, um, Honoré Maubert and his son Alexandre were in the perfume um, business. And in the 18th century onwards, uh, Grasse became the great city of perfumes and still to this day, it is the perfume capital of the world. Uh, there are many companies that are established there that make perfumes and, and continue to be thriving, based especially on the wonderful variety of flowers that grows in the region. The climate around Grasse is incredible, in, as it is obviously in the French Riviera. So uh, there is a great um, festival of jasmine in the summer in Grasse. And this is just to show you some, some of the, the tools of the perfume maker. And many of these factories um, still survive in Grasse and are flourishing. The most important one was created in 1926, and it is still functioning and still very much thriving. And it was named after Fragonard. So it has nothing to do with the Fragonard family, but uh, in honor of the great son of Grasse and the great painter, it was named after him. So uh, I'm sure you all know uh, many of the, uh, the, the Fragonard perfumes and um, the, their um, Manufactory in Grasse can be, can be visited. And they also run uh, a series of museums. There is a wonderful museum of costume, of Provencal costume. Uh, but there is also a museum dedicated to the work of Fragonard that has a series of works by Fragonard and by Marguerite Gerard. And just to give you uh, an example of a couple of them, uh, this is the visit uh, to the nurse, a wonderful painting by Fragonard in the Fragonard Museum in Grasse and another one uh, which belonged uh, also to the family of the founders of the perfume manufactory Fragonard, uh, the sacrifice of the rose, much more in the spirit of the grand love paintings that we know at the, at the Frick. So Grasse is still very much a city where the ghost of Fragonard lives and, and is celebrated in a number of ways. Uh, through the great activities of perfume making in Grasse, but also through his work. So from early works uh, like the one in the cathedral to a number of works in both the museum, the Fragonard Museum and the villa. And of course, the great copies of the Fragonard Room in the villa and the grand painted staircase. And before leaving Grasse, make sure to buy a fougassette. And a fougassette is the typical um, bread that is sold in Grasse, which is actually made, and this is obviously perfect for a city where perfume is so important, is made with orange flower water. And so that's what gives it its typical taste. So I hope you will all visit Grasse soon, and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode next week. Good evening. <laughs>